About one in eight U.S. women, that's 12%, will develop invasive breast cancer over the course of her lifetime. In 2014, an estimated 232,000 670 new cases of invasive breast cancer were expected to be diagnosed in women in the U.S., along with 62,570 new cases of non-invasive breast cancer. About 2,360 new cases of invasive breast cancer were expected to be diagnosed in men in 2014. A man's lifetime risk of breast cancer is about 1 in 1,000. Breast cancer incidence rates in the U.S. began decreasing in the year 2000 after increasing for the previous two decades. They dropped from by 7%, 7% drop from 2002 to 2003 alone. One theory, it's not a theory. Well, it is a theory because how can you prove stuff like this? But the talk around the campus is that the reason for this 7% decrease in the occurrence of breast cancer was due to women saying no to hormone replacement therapy after the results of a large study called the Women's Health Initiative, which were published in 2002, which conclusively, academically, statistically showed a a remarkable relationship between hormone replacement therapy and the incidence of breast cancer. That's right. Breast cancer caused by a prescription medication which was prescribed for a non-medical condition, menopause. Menopause is not a disease. It is a time of life. However, male doctors, male PhDs got together and said, oh, I don't know who my wife is anymore. I don't know who my girlfriend is anymore. I don't know who my mistress is anymore. I don't know who my fourth mistress is anymore. She's nuts. So what are we going to do? Well, I know what we're going to do, boys. We're going to give her a hormone. What are we going to do? How are we going to do that? I know. I know. Let's do natural, naturally occurring estradiol, estrone, and estriol. Let's do that. I mean, that's what's in their bodies uh, anyway. Oh, no, no, no. We can't do that, says Dr. Huff and Puff, because you can't patent a naturally occurring substance. Oh, no, no, no. If we can't patent it, what are we going to make it for? We need to make some money, boys. We need to make some money. Get those women in line. So rather than coming up with a bio-identical hormone replacement strategy, the MDs and the pharmacists and the PhDs got together and they took two parts horse hormone and one part human hormone and they cobbled them together into Premarin. That's where Premarin got its name because the horse hormones, equiline and equilase, are derived from the urine of pregnant mares. Premarin gets its name from pregnant mares, which is the source of the horse hormone. So that's a good idea, says Dr. Huff and Puff. Two parts horse hormone, one part human hormone. Whoa, let's do that. Well, guess what? Sounds crazy to you, is crazy to me. But they convinced the FDA that it was A-OK. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of women got breast cancer and uterine cancer from Premarin which was caused by a prescribed for a non-medical condition, menopause. Menopause isn't a disease, it's a time of life. (laughs) So, but the MDs get away with it, and even though it's been proven to cause cancer, they still sell it, not so much in the U.S., because U.S. women are smarter than that now. Well, most of them are. So, third world developing companies get the brunt of Premarin sales now. Isn't that just dandy? And oh, by the way, nobody went to jail. 7% increase in cancer from that drug, 7% decrease when women got a clue and stopped taking it. About 40,000 women in the U.S. are expected to die in 2014 from breast cancer. 40,000 in the U.S. are expected to die from breast cancer, although this number has been decreasing since 1989, uh, especially in women under 50. This is because of radical mastectomies, radical mastectomies. Besides skin cancer, breast cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer among African women. Just under 30% of cancers in African women are breast cancers. It's quite crazy runaway train from a statistical point of view. So while we have given the MDs exclusive control over the domain of medicine, while we have kicked every other physician off of the bus of medicine, while we have kicked the chiropractors to the curb, the osteopaths to the curb, while the osteopaths came back, but they're not osteopaths anymore, 
while we kick the naturopaths and the homeopaths and the acupuncturists and the Ayurvedic practitioners and everybody else to the curb, <clears throat> making it illegal for them to practice medicine. While we have given exclusive control over the domain of medical care to the MDs and the pharmaceutical industry, since Richard Nixon waged his war on cancer in the 60s, cancer rates for breast cancer have largely remained unchanged. This year, 232,670 new cases of invasive breast cancer, new cases of invasive breast cancer, while we have given the control of medicine to the MDs. And oh, by the way, let's take a look at this, the cost of mastectomy. So let's say you're a woman and let's say you have breast cancer and let's say you go to a conventional MD because what else are you going to do? That's the only show in town. The MDs are the only people legally allowed to treat cancer here in the United States. They're the only dog in the hunt. They're the only pony in the ring. So if you've got breast cancer, you're scared and rightly so. So what are you going to do? You're going to go to the only show in town. You're going to go to the MD and the MD is going to tell you that you need mastectomy radiation and chemo the grand total for one breast for mastectomy radiation and chemo the average cost for all of these is a hundred thousand dollars per breast a hundred thousand dollars per breast a hundred thousand dollars per breast now even if you have medical insurance or something called a coinsurance so once your deductible is met let's say you have a five thousand dollar deductible well uh, so five thousand, hundred thousand dollars minus five thousand. That's ninety-five thousand uh, dollars. The coinsurance that you have is going to make you put you on the hook for anywhere between ten and fifty percent of the rest of the costs. So what's fifty percent of ninety-five? Forty-seven thousand five hundred. Let's round it down. Forty grand. So even if you have insurance, you're looking at forty thousand dollars per breast. And we wonder why the medical community isn't looking forward to coming up with a cure for cancer because it is a giant money-making industry for them. And remember, if insurance covers it, the insurance company pays the hospital. So the hospital's making a hundred grand. The hospitals and the doctors are making about a hundred grand either way, whether the insurance is involved or not. They're going to make the money. The insurance companies are going to pay them. It's okay for the insurance companies because they've worked out the numbers. Everybody's in bed together, and it is—it makes you sick when you think about it. But you know, when everybody's crazy, when we've let the inmates run the asylum, well, craziness becomes the rule of law, becomes the rule of the day. So now, women all around the country, all around the world, have become enrolled by their oncologists into believing in the wonders of mastectomy, radiation, and chemo. And, you know, there are a certain percentages of breast cancer patients who have mastectomies, radiation, and chemo, and they're survivors. They're long-term survivors, but it's not a large percent. It is not a large percent. The five-year survivorship for breast cancer is less than 20%, less than 20%. So, even if you do everything that the MDs tell you to do, only a very small percentage of women are actually going to be alive five years down the road. And, by the way, cutting off the breast, hacking off the breast, this is an acceptable treatment, really? I mean, that's like, you know, if we woke up tomorrow and all of a sudden there was an epidemic of uh, finger cancer, Epidemic of hand cancer. Oh, everybody, uh, well, well, one-third of the population has hand cancer. Well, one cure for hand cancer is to cut off your hands. And then there would be an entire industry that develops for, you know, robot hands, right? And one would feed the other. And there'd be new advances in, in, hand, hand, in, in hand lobotomy surgery. <laughs> Just, you know, home guillotines for the hand. That's what we got. We got the, the cuisine art, home guillotine for the hand. We'll just heat that blade up. It'll cauterize it. We'll inject some morphine into you, into the bargain. Right? Hacking off the breast. Oh, that's an advanced treatment for cancer? No, it's not. It's archaic. It's old-fashioned. It's outdated. It is, you know, crazy. But it's the, you know, 
It's the, what is it? Black is the new pink. Pink is the new black. Whatever. Black is the new orange. 40 is the new 30. Whatever. This is what we all have become accustomed to because it's everywhere all the time, only because we do not have a free medical market and we have become enrolled in the insanity of the MD. So, and once again, this completely overlooks the fact, 100% overlooks the fact that the tumor is not the disease. The tumor is the result of the disease. So would it not be prudent? Would it not be wiser? Would it not be more um, uh, better to try to get on board, to try to understand the metabolic process that made the tumor develop in the first place? I mean, selenium supplementation, one mineral, selenium, given at 200 micrograms a day, which is an eeny, weeny, teeny amount, reduces the occurrence of breast cancer by 82 percent 82 percent reduction in the occurrence of breast cancer which means if every girl in the united states took one selenium capsule every day starting at birth in one generation we'd eliminate breast cancer by 82 percent now why aren't the susan g Cohen women what g Cohen women marching for that why isn't medical research going in that direction? Because the conventional medical doctors don't give a damn about a cure. If they did, they'd be researching selenium. They are not. They're researching the BRCA gene. They're researching genetic implications, which I'm about to tell you in the following segment are a fool's errand. More surgery, more drugs, more chemo, a hundred grand a breast. That sounds good to me, boys. Oh, yeah, let's do that. And that's exactly what you've taken. That's exactly what you've let them force down your throat. Susan G. Komen, be damned. Ladies and gentlemen, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and take a stand for your health. I am Dr. Peter Glidden. Welcome aboard. This is Fire Your MD Now. everybody, Dr. Peter Glidden here, your steadfast advocate for health. This is Breast Cancer Day on uh, the drglidenshow.tv. And, you know, knowledge is power. We have very little knowledge about this, and we just kind of do what everybody else does, even though what everybody else does is just this side of insanity. You know, it becomes reality by consensus, and this is what happens when you have a medical monopoly, which is a runaway train. Anything goes. Any therapy goes, and they'll just keep throwing stuff on the wall. Whatever sticks to the wall, that goes. Even though uh, the 14-year study uh, published about 10 years ago proved that chemo for adult onset cancer doesn't work, they continue to, to recommend chemotherapy because it's a giant moneymaker. Remember, with the MDs, it's all about research this and double-blind that until the research goes against the grain of conventional treatment, and then they disregard it completely. And they can do that because they're the king. There's no other profession in the world that can do that because the MDs are self-regulating and self-policing. They screw up, nothing bad happens. They have to screw up really super bad for something super bad to happen. And still, nobody goes to jail. Leading cause of death in the United States, MD-directed medical therapeutics, nobody goes to jail. Leading cause of bankruptcy in the United States, MD-directed medical therapeutics, nobody goes to jail. It's a runaway train, a juggernaut of biblical proportions, and we need to just, you know, wake up, snap out of it, dust ourselves off, and get on board with medical nutrition. I mean, are you kidding me? Selenium supplementation reduces the occurrence of breast cancer by 82%, so why isn't everyone in the world taking selenium? because it's a naturally occurring substance, there ain't no money in it, and your medical doctor doesn't know anything about it, even though there is so much research behind the selenium breast cancer prevention notion that Dr. Joel Wallach, the founder of Longevity, sued the Food and Drug Administration years ago uh, to secure a qualified health claim which allows us to say in the public forum that selenium supplementation reduces the occurrence of breast cancer by 82%. There is a ton of research to support this notion, a ton of it, a ton of it. But conventional medicine turns a blind eye, and this should make you extremely angry, especially if you have a loved one who's been dealing with breast cancer, extremely angry. But this is the way that the world goes. Medicine progresses one funeral at a time. Hopefully it won't 
be yours. We talked about the BRCA gene last week when I did a expose on epigenetics. By the way, it was a really good webinar. It's available for insiders and their guests exclusively. Become an insider at drglidden.com. Twenty-five bucks a month. It'll be the best twenty-five bucks you've ever spent. Drglidden.com. Become an insider. Watch the hour-long presentation that I did on epigenetics. It's in the archives now, along with 120 hours, I think, of uh, other recorded archives, health webinars. Awesome stuff at your fingertips for a simple, low monthly subscription fee, which, by the way, you can cancel at any time. We'll give you a week's trial period. Week's trial. You don't like it? We'll give you all your money back after a week. The BRCA gene is a normally occurring gene in both men and women, and it is the job of the BRCA gene, both BRCA1 and BRCA2, to repair broken DNA. That is the job of the healthy BRCA gene. It repairs broken DNA. It repairs mutations in the DNA. Now, science doesn't ask themselves the question, well, what caused the normal BRCA gene to mutate into a mutated BRCA gene? What made that happen? Well, let me guess. Hmm. Selenium supplementation reduces the occurrence of breast cancer by 82%. Gee, I wonder if there's a relationship between selenium and or a lack thereof and the mutation of the gene. Well, that's where I would look. If I was a research scientist, I would go there. That's called what? Is that deductive reasoning? I think it's deductive reasoning. I would go there. That would be a smart place for me to look, especially since all of the genetic material, all of your chromosomes are held together by something called metallic fingers. Metals, specifically minerals, minerals are vitally important in the structural integrity of your DNA. Now, knowing what I know about the architecture of the DNA, knowing about the importance of the mineral fingers, in maintaining a healthy architecture of DNA, knowing about selenium and its relationship to the prevention of breast cancer, and knowing that the BRCA mutation is a mutation and not a normal gene, I would go there. But conventional medical people are not going to go there because they don't give a damn about it, folks. They don't. Snap out of it. Your medical doctor does not deserve your respect. They just want to cut and burn and drug, cut and burn and drug, stuff the profits in their pocket and not be concerned with a cure. You think the Susan G. Coleman women are marching for a cure? You have your head in the sand. Stick around. More to come. So, right, this is what it's like. It's 100 grand a pop per breast for breast cancer treatment, which is conventional, right? It's conventional stuff. It's gigantic money. 200,000 new cases this year. So what's 200,000 times 100,000? That's $20 million per breast. So we're looking at between 40 and 20 and $40 million of profit, uh, of income, of revenue generated um, from not being able to prevent breast cancer and treating it with a medieval methodology. Yeah, let's just hack the breast off. That's a good idea. Oh, no, pay no attention to the selenium connection. We shouldn't go there. And, you know, to finish up on the BRCA um, um, uh, riff I was going on in the last section, the BRCA gene itself in its healthy manifestation repairs mutated DNA. Now, the vast majority of your genetic material, the vast majority of your genetic material, scientists refer to as junk DNA. It's over 70%. It's over 70%, and that's a low-ball number. It's junk DNA, which means they have no idea what it does. So don't you think it's possible that if we know that there's two genes that repair DNA and there's 70% of the rest is junk, that we know maybe some of that also repairs stuff? I mean, we know that the body has a repair mechanism already in place. So that would be how I would think, but that's not how your medical doctor thinks because your medical doctor hasn't been trained to think creatively. Your medical doctor has been trained to toe the party line, to do what their colleagues do, to do what the rule of, you know, their medical their their medical prerogative says, their, their medical license. Oh, just stay inside that box. Well, what if that box is wrong? What if that box produces piss-poor results? What if that box is just wrong? 
Oh, your medical doctor is a coward. They're not going to step outside of that box. They're not going to do anything. They're just going to give more chemo, even though it's been proven to be ineffective. They're going to do more radiation, more surgery, even though the five-year survival rate is unbelievably poor. But I guess they're okay with it. Apparently so. So wouldn't it be prudent, don't you think, to focus on a treatment that helps the BRCA gene to unmutate? I mean, wouldn't that be where to go? That's where I would go. But that's not where they're going to go. One more reason why you should fire your medical doctor. And honest to God, get my book. It's free. Freedoctorbook.com. You get an electronic version. If you want the soft, soft, soft bound version, it's 20 bucks. It's on my website. Click on the store button. We'll mail you. Amazon will mail you a, a brand new copy of my book. And read the chapter on cancer. And if anybody in your life gets cancer, have them take that book and read the 10 questions politely in the presence of a witness and a recording device to their oncologist. And when they listen to what the oncologist says in reply to these quest questions politely delivered, the cancer patient will have a much better idea of whether to move forward with that treatment or hold and do something else. Oh, what's what's that? You have to go outside of the country to do anything else. Yeah, that's right. I forgot because the only people who can legally treat cancer in the United States are the people who suck at treating cancer, the MDs. And I'm the quack. Larry in Saskatchewan is up next. Hey, Larry, thanks for the call. You are live. Hi. Come in, Larry. Yes. Larry, you're up. How are you? Uh, not too great, I would have to say. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm glad that you found your way here. How can I help? Uh, I've, got, I've, I've got a question for you. Uh, like, I've been to doctors that have, uh, that have talked to me about uh, that I could have, like, MS. Multiple cirrhosis or something. So you've been to a number of doctors, and they say that, uh, Larry, maybe you've got MS? Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, what, what do you think of that? I mean, that, that, that's, first of all, you should never tell that to a patient if it's not definitive because, you know, the MD is supposed to be all clinically detached and not supposed to bother the patient, not supposed to create any undue stress in the patient's mind. Telling somebody that, hey, Larry, maybe you've got multiple sclerosis. Um, geez, I don't really know. See you later. Um, you know, have a nice peanut butter sandwich for lunch. Uh, you know, that just doesn't cut it as far as I'm concerned. You, you yeah. need to go You need to go to see somebody else, Larry. Those people have their heads up there behind. I, I, uh, I don't like uh, doctors. Well, I mean, I wouldn't either if someone told that to me. And again, folks, we don't have an ax to grind. You know, this isn't like we're prejudiced against MDs. We're not. We're prejudiced against old-fashioned, outdated, Machiavellian, monopolistic, mediocre medical therapeutics delivered on an unassuming public for a profit. That's what we're against, and you should be too. And we're the only ones standing up and say, guess what? The emperor has no clothes. The MD emperor has no clothes. They're butt naked. Their therapeutics are a fantasy. They're selling snake oil. You're buying it. In Canada, you can't even, you got no choice. They take it right out of your paycheck, and that should be illegal. Yeah. Uh, the question I had for you what's your take on uh, is MS curable? Well, we, we never use the cure word. I mean, I could have 10,000 people with multiple sclerosis. Yeah. They get on board with the treatment, they all get better, and I would not legally be able to say I can cure it. I, I can't. I see what you mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen people with MS definitively diagnosed and they no longer have it. I've seen people with MS get 50% better, and I've seen people with MS get 10% better. I've never seen anyone with MS get no better. Um, so, you know, our entire thing here is, well, look, this is broad brush, boilerplate, foundation medical nutrition for the masses. So... If you think that your neurological system is, you know, is, is is unhealthy, then it would be prudent for you to get on board with a medical nutrition program. The intention of which is to support and promote healthy central nervous system. Yes, right. you, so yes, that's that, what that, I would do so if, if I were you. My uh, my energy currently like is 
do loads of dumps. Like, and I you're get out you're of doing bed at ten eleven in the morning. Yeah, yes, and you're doing the full longevity program. I'm not doing nothing yet. Oh well, okay. So look, here's the deal. So, I have seen remarkable changes with longevity in many different definitively diagnosed medical conditions across the board. I have, and that's why I'm such a cheerleader for longevity. I've been doing holistic medicine as a naturopath in the clinical setting for 25 years. That's a quarter of a century. Um, I know most of the big big names in holistic medicine in the world, um, and I'm telling you, if I was up against a chronic health condition, and I wanted to do something alternative, quote-unquote, aggressively to support and promote my body's ability to fix itself, yeah. I'd go with longevity, and I'd go with longevity for a minimum of six months. That's what I would do. So, well, how much do you weigh, man? Uh, six foot to 160 pounds. Eyes of blue? Yes. Does <laughs> that make a difference? <laughs> So, number one, Larry, and I'm as serious as a heart attack when I say this, and so you need to please take everything that I say, you know, seriously. And so, yeah, number one. I'm, I'm holding a pen to write it down. All right, good man. Number one, you have to stop the 10 bad foods. Uh, Period. Where can I find them on your website? Uh, on the right-hand side of my website. There's a column that says, uh, click here to become a member of Dr. Glidden's free newsletter. Um, if you click there, if you give us your email address. We give you a video. It's a 45-minute video for free that explains the 10 bad foods, plus we give you the list. It's also in my book. You can get my book for free. How free do do uh, Freedoctorbook.com. Freedoctorbook.com. Um, you can download it to your computer in, in, in you know, 30 seconds. So eliminate like, the 10 bad foods. I don't like to be calling you a doctor. Well, you know, look, well, I get it. But, you know, in the world of, um, you know, I mean, I don't know. You know, there, there's 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 good uh, blacksmiths and there's bad blacksmiths, right? There's good plumbers, yeah. there's bad plumbers, right? Okay. I mean, there are good doctors in the world. There are. There are. And I'm one of them. And so, you know, uh, you can call me doctor. Um, which is entirely appropriate, but I understand your hesitation there. You know, I wish there was a different name for it. Um, maybe we should try to think one up and spread that around. I would not be immune to that. You're never going to see me wear a white coat, I, by the way, uh, because I am, I'm 100% against that. But I digress, and we're running out of time. So here's what we have to do, man. Eliminate the 10 bad foods, number one. Number two. You have to start eating a diet that's high in cholesterol. And I don't care how you do that. Eggs, full fat milk, full fat yogurt, full fat cheese, chicken with the skin, turkey with the skin, rare steak, rare hamburger, butter. You got to go crazy for cholesterol because your nerves are made from cholesterol, right? So if you think you have a neurological condition or you know you have a neurological condition, then a diet high in cholesterol will help that. You don't have to worry about cholesterol and heart disease because there ain't no relationship there. I wrote about that in my book, too. So stop the 10 bad foods. Eat a diet high in cholesterol. Start using table salt liberally. Salt your food so that it tastes good. Uh, that, 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 would that be sea salt? Yes, that's the best. Sea salt or Himalayan salt is better than table salt. Yes. All right. Now, for supplements at your body weight, um, here's what I would do for the first two months, and then I'm going to tell you what to do for the last four months of this six-month program, right? Six-month experiment. For the first two months, I'd like you, please, each month to do one Healthy Body Start Pack 2.0 liquid. One Healthy Body Start Pack 2.0 liquid. One of those per month. One bottle of plant-derived minerals per month. Two bottles of, oh. ulti of ultimate selenium per month. Two bottles of ultimate selenium per month. Two bottles. Two bottles. And one bottle of immortalium. I'm sorry, two bottles of immortalium per month. Two bottles of immortalium. 
for the first two months. For the last four months of this program, double that program. Double it. Take two of everything instead of one of everything. Okay. We'll just double it. So you'd be taking four selenium a month, two healthy body start packs, etc., etc. Right. So start slow. You know, the change in your diet up is not the easiest thing in the world, but you can do it. Yeah. Getting into the rhythm of taking these supplements every day on a regular basis is not the easiest thing in the world, but you can do it. And if you feed this stuff to your body slowly at first, slow and steady does it, then by the third month you can kick it up a notch, go into fifth gear, and then, you know, we're off to the races here, man. And look, also, understand, Larry, w w this is no nonsense, no BS stuff. In the first three months, in the first 12 weeks of this program, we are looking for noticeable, measurable, remarkably positive change. I'm not looking for mediocre, mamby-pamby change. No. I'm looking for big time. Oh, my God, I have never felt, you know, this good. So keep a weather eye out for positive change and call us back with a report. I'll look forward to that. Stick around, folks. Christian in Iowa is up next. Let's go to Iowa and talk to Christian. Hey, Christian, thanks for the call. You are live. Thank you for uh, taking the time to speak with me. And actually, I am new to Longevity, and some of my old coworkers that I've known for years introduced me to it. And I'm basically a hot mess. I have a list of active problems, and I'm 32 years old, and um, I eat healthy. I don't drink pop. Um, I live in a very small town, so I don't have a lot of, like, those fast food restaurants. But I was recently in an accident this past year. I've gone through several uh, pretty big surgeries and kind of went from not being on any prescriptions to being on so many that I'm like a zombie. And I feel yeah, like I I'm getting um, yeah. additional symptoms because of medications that they put me on. So, I mean, I just, you know, it's just a been huge transition for me, especially going from working a job for 14 years to being at home trying to figure out how to live with this new lifestyle of active issues. And I've been hopped around from physical therapist to um, pain specialist to neuro neurologist. And currently I'm working actively with an orthopedic doctor on treatments with orthopedic manipulation. And they came up with two very, very rare syndromes that I have and came back with, you know, reasoning behind a lot of my symptoms, but they don't, they're not prescribing me. And it's just kind of wanting to get the best protocol for my situation just because I've been undergoing so many active problems and medication. Well, I'm glad you found us. I'm glad you found Longevity. I'm glad you found your way here. But, and I'll, I will talk you through everything that you need to do Hold on, we have to. I have to make an audio adjustment here. Apparently, okay. And that is better. Okay, so um, we are talking uh, with uh, Christian in Iowa. She's new to Longevity, and she's been run through the mill with conventional medicine. She's taking lots of pain medication. She's not really getting any better. She's feeling like. She doesn't know what to do. Some of the medications that they're giving her are actually causing other symptoms, and she feels like she's spinning her wheels, and she doesn't really know what to do. She's brand new to longevity and wants good old Dr. G to give her a clue. Christian, I'm more than happy to do this. And we're up against the end of the first hour here, so stick with me, and I'll bring you right back up at the very beginning of the second hour, which is six after the hour. And I'll walk you right through this. But one thing that I don't want to overlook is the million-pound gorilla in the middle of the room. You got hurt in an accident, and you leaned on conventional medicine because it's the only show in town. And conventional medicine has not helped you. Conventional medicine has, in fact, harmed you. Conventional medicine has let you down. You're not getting any better, and you've given yourself over to the experts, and they've let you down. And that speaks volumes for what everybody in this country is up against to different degrees. And that's exactly why Longevity exists, to provide a rational, scientific alternative to this type of nonsense. Stick around, Christian. I will bring you up immediately in the second hour. 
Let's go to Christian and dial it in. All right, Christian, welcome back. Are you still with me? I am still with you. All right. How much do you weigh, please? I weigh 160 pounds. So I'm assuming that uh, the accident that you, you were in left you with bone and joint trauma? Uh, yes. Okay. Well, I mean, were you paralyzed at all? Was the spinal cord yes. involved? Yes. Okay. So what part of your body is paralyzed? Uh, currently, I have a spinal cord injury, and I had a double disc cervical fusion done on my neck. Yep. And uh, I have the lum, lum sac innerverted disc. They say I have degenerative disc disease. Yeah. Some vago. Yeah, you know, they're just throwing crap on the wall to make themselves seem important. And no matter what they name it, Candace, right, they still have no idea what to do to fix it, right? Right. It's Kristen. Kristen, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah. Kristen. No, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. So I, the active problems that I have, I have um, anxiety, um, not just with this whole process, just because this has been a complete, like, wake-up call transition for me. I just have, have to learn to live with it. But I, I feel like they just... They they give me meds for everything. So um, one of the most recent diagnoses I had was fibromyalgia and um, the degenerative disc disease. But I also have a hemi pelvis syndrome and a low left leg syndrome. Yeah. So everything on one side is shifted. So I have digestive pro- problems digesting food and um, going to the bathroom. It takes a long time. And have you seen I, a chiropractor for that or not? Um, I've previously seen a chiropractor, but it doesn't help because, or it has not helped. Um, okay. And I think it's because um, of the damage to my spinal cord. Because um, even though they've done this fusion, I still have to go in and get, they, they do Botox injections, <laughs> nerve dermablation surgeries where they go in and cut the nerve. Yeah, no, I'm familiar with all of it. Yeah, it's, it's, and uh, I, um, yeah. Botox injections help with the migraines. Cause I have vision, I have had, vision changes, um, mood changes, um, they call it idiopathic pearl neuropathy, uh, lumbar radio, radio capacity, um, numbness and tingling, um, sciatica. And I have problems with my, um, like urine pain because it hurts to urinate and I urinate frequently. Um, so when I have to go, I have to run to the bathroom. Yeah, I get it. Um, so it's, but the big thing is that the, they call it, um, cer- cervicalesia. I don't know what that is, but I'm just listing some of the diagnosis as well as just active problems I've had. Um, but I also have a broken tailbone. Um, but yeah, the only big surgery that I had was the neck. But after that, I have trouble walking without support of a stroller or grocery cart. Um, but with the treatment I'm getting currently, they put in a heel lift and a pelvic lift. So when I sit, I put like a New Testament on my left butt cheek. And yeah. then I have like a heel <laughs> lift in my left uh, shoe. So it's since not a bad I have idea. those two things, um, I've had less tripping. Yeah. But I just have problems. I'm never hungry. I mean, not never hungry because I eat, yeah. but I just I get don't. it. Yeah. Well, you know, everything in the body is intimately connected. And when one part of the body is in pain for an extended period of time, that's going to have ripple effects on every other part of the body. And it's only a matter of time until your mood and your energy and your appetite are also affected. And, you know, this yeah. is not this is not something that you have to live with for goodness sake. This is something that you have to deal with and attempt to uh, support your body's ability to get on the other side of it. Now, listen, I am not in the business of giving false hope. I do not do that. And I got to tell you something. I have seen two of the, uh, there are like 10 remarkable health turnarounds. Like, oh my God, that's, that's like just this side of a miracle. With the longevity, 10. I haven't counted, well, uh, right, right around there, right? Two of the, like, oh, my God, that's like a miracle. W- health recoveries that I've seen where one was with a young woman who was in a, a wicked, bad automobile accident. 
She had a number of different surgeries. The last surgery that they did, the MDs put a bone screw. They screwed a screw right into her spinal cord, and they paralyzed her from the waist down. Oh. She, oh, she was in massive amounts of pain. Of course, she couldn't walk. And six months later, the pain's gone, and she's walking. It was unbelievable. Another kid, a young man, was in a motorcycle accident, completely smashed everything. I mean, it was just like just just a, a just a soup no more bones just soup um within nine months 80 percent of his complaints were gone so look i don't know you know how far gone your system is i don't i don't know how far it is neither does your aunt neither does your orthopedic doctor and quite frankly this is a very important distinction for you to make Kristen. this is a very important distinction for you to make you know um, Republicans look at life one way. Democrats look at life another. They're both dealing with the same set of problems, but they look at them through two completely different lenses. And let's not even talk about communists because they look at the same set of problems through a completely different filter. Baptists, Buddhists, Hindus, Muslims, Roman Catholics, born-again Christians, they all have different understandings of the world through which they you know, try to make their way through life. Well, it's no different in medicine. And your medical doctor may be the nicest person that God ever created, but your medical doctor, by virtue of their training, does not know what's best for you. They only know what they've been trained in. And now, interestingly enough, the method that they've been trained in is referred to as allopathic reductionism. Your medical doctor doesn't practice medicine. They practice allopathic medicine. I practice naturopathic medicine, right? There's many different types of medicine, many different types of dog, many different types of medicine. Well, your medical doctor practices allopathic medicine, and allopathic medicine argues that once you're sick, you're screwed, your body really doesn't have an ability to fix itself, and your only option is to let the physician, the MD, manage your symptoms with drugs, and surgery, right? A cure is not is not probable. A cure is not sought after. A cure is not even on the radar. The MD's job is just to manage your symptoms, keep you alive as long as is possible. And if you need to be taking 65 drugs to secure that, well, then that's just life and suck it up, young lady, and take your drugs. And that's how they think. Now, you know, I'm not against drugs. I, I love drugs. You know, th- every time I go to the dentist's office, I'm like thanking God for Novocaine, right? Uh, sometimes a drug is awesome and it'll save your life and it's the best thing since sliced bread. Well, sliced gluten-free bread. But the fact of the matter is the way that the MDs prescribe drugs most of the time is in keeping with their allopathic reductionistic philosophy, which argues that the human body is a biochemical bag waiting to break, and when it does break, you can't fix it. You just got to keep throwing drugs in there to orchestrate a hostile takeover of the biochemistry of the body and and then, you know, die. (laughs) So on the other hand, every holistic physician in the world argues, well, the human body knows how to fix itself. The human body wants to fix itself. The human body is attempting all of the time to fix itself. I don't know where the point of no return is. So every single solitary time in longevity, we give people nutritional support, get the heck out of the way, and see how far back the body is able to bounce. And often we are astounded at the degree to which the body is able to fix itself. So please tell me your body weight once more. 160 pounds. All right. So here's what I want you to do every month for the first three months. And I want you to call me every four weeks and report on the radio what's happening, okay? Okay. I want you to do this every month for the next three months. Number one, you must stop all 10 bad foods. You can get that list for free on my website or just go get my book. It's free, freedoctorbook.com, free, D-O-C-T-O-R, book.com. Um, you can download it to your computer. And in the back of the book is the list of the 10 bad foods, all right? You got to stop eating all 10 of those foods yesterday. Number two, you need to start using uh, sea salt or uh, Himalayan salt on your food that you do eat, and you want to salt your food liberally so that it tastes good. Uh, Don't be afraid of salt. Number three, here are the supplements that I would like you to take every month for the next three months. One, Healthy Body Start Pack 2.0 Liquid. One, 
Healthy Body Start Pack 2.0 liquid, one of those per month. Four bottles of Ultimate Selenium per month. Four bottles of Ultimate Selenium per month. One bottle of Cal Toddy. It's a Super Life uh, product. A Super Life is a subsidiary of Longevity's. It's Super Life Cal Toddy. One bottle of Super Life Cal Toddy per month. Two bottles. Two bottles of Cherry Mins. Two bottles of Cherry Mins per month. Two bottles of Cherry Mins per month. And I have to do some quick math here. 480 and two bottles per month of glucogel at the 240 count. Longevity has glucogel capsules, glucogel capsules and glucogel liquid. I would like you to get the glucogel capsules, please. And I would like you to get two of the capsule bottles that have 240 glucogel capsules in them. Two of those a month. Do that for four weeks. Call me back with a report, and I'll dial it in a little more if I need to. Lean on your upline for advice about how to take the bike. Hey, 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 let's stay up in Canada. Let's go to Alberta and talk to Karen. Hey, Karen, thanks for the call. You are live. Karen in Alberta. Yes, I'm here. Hey, what's going on? Hi. Um, which which city? I... Well, hold on, hold on. Which city in Alberta? Edmonton. Oh, we love Edmonton. Yeah. How are those Oilers doing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good friend of mine, um, the guy that fills in for me every Friday, Mike Phillip, um, goes up to Edmonton on a regular basis. Is that how you found out about Longevity? Uh, no, actually through a friend. Oh, very good. Very, yeah. very good. Have you, have you lived in, in Edmonton your whole life? I have. Yeah. And has it started to snow there yet? Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> but we did we did get some like in September, but yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. I have a bone to pick with my Canadian crew because I have a number of people in in the province of Alberta who are uh, dyed in the wool longevity fans, and our longevity group is growing every week up there. But for some reason, they always schedule me to come and give a lecture in Alberta in the middle of the winter, and I just don't get it. I think they're trying to rub it in. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, it's really cold here, for sure. So enough of this fooling around the campfire here, Karen. That's not why you called. Thanks so much for calling. How can I help? Okay, I uh, got diagnosed 21 years ago with MS. I had relapsing remitting at the time. Yeah, Um, relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. Yeah, 21 years ago and had some really severe symptoms then, but was put on prednisone for a while and got, you know, for the most part better. Um, a few symptoms over the years, but not much until about seven years ago. It turned to secondary progressive. Yeah. And then I started getting, um, you know, more severe symptoms. I have basically a lot of muscle stiffness, weakness, yeah. spasticity, muscle spasms, muscle cramps, yeah. mostly in my legs. Okay. Discomfort, hard to walk, poor balance. Yeah. Yeah, it's neurological stuff is just a real pain in the neck. I mean, it's just it's just overarching and it's, you know, it's just you feel like your body's kind of betrayed you, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a big bad voodoo daddy. So, look. Well, there well, I would encourage you to go to my website, become an insider if you haven't done it already or, you know, talk to the person that invited you to Longevity. Maybe they are an insider because I did a 60-minute long webinar with slides and the whole dissertation on what we believe the holistic methodology is around the genesis of multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, I lined it all up, and it was a really good presentation, if I do say so myself. And so um, if you go to my website, become an insider now, uh, for goodness sake, you become an insider for seven days. And if you don't like it, we give your money back, right? So I would check that out. Now, I'm going to tell you live on the radio kind of in a nutshell of how we, what we think about this and what to do to support healthy nerve function. But really, this is kind of a complicated subject. Well, it's not a complicated subject, but there's stuff that you need to know that I'm not going to be able to, you know, disseminate in, in, in three minutes over the radio, right? So. Okay, so what is that seminar called? 
Um, it's called, well, if you, once you become an insider, you go into right. the archives, the health yeah. webinar archives. And the title of the webinar is MS, <clears throat> Parkinson's disease, and okay. uh, something else. But it's, okay. it's I'll watch you, that. you won't be able to miss it. Okay. okay. All right. So. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but um, iron turns to rust very easily, right? Right. Yeah. Food goes bad. Food spoils. Fruit spoils. Vegetables spoil. Meat spoils. Uh, mountains turn to dust. Iron turns to rust. Everything decays on the face of planet Earth. And one of the main engines of decay and destruction for everything, whether it's a, a mineral or a vegetable or an animal on planet Earth, is an insidious process which is present everywhere all the time called oxidative damage. Right. Oxidative damage is a big bad voodoo daddy. It's everywhere all the time, and in some places there's more of it, in some places there's less of it. We believe that oxidative damage is the main um, operative force here, which is hurting your nerves, and so we need to get on the other side of oxidative damage. We need to support your body's ability to fight oxidative damage in a big way. And that's what the therapeutic revolves around, fighting oxidative damage, which is just a normal part of life. As it turns out, your body has a fire department, and I'm going to tell you on the other side of the break how to support and promote a healthy and strong fire department inside the human body. So glad you found me. Stick around. So much more to come. Okay. We're talking to Karen from Alberta right now, who recently is experiencing a relapse of multiple sclerosis. Karen, are you still with me? I am. And All right. uh, I can tell you, too, that I've been using the Longevity products for about between three and four months. Yeah. And uh, beginning of September, I went gluten-free, stopped doing the 10 bad foods. I've been doing, like, I noticed the energy change as soon as I went gluten-free. Um, but I still have a lot of stiffness a lot of pain and discomfort okay so what's the nature of the pain is it because of the muscle stiffness yes muscle okay stiffness, muscle spasms. all right good so how much do you weigh 110 pounds okay oh well, you'll be easy okay good so here's what i would like you to do every month for the next uh three months okay. um and you know call me back every four weeks with a report because at 110 pounds there should be a noticeable change um, within four weeks, okay? So, per month, I would like you to do one healthy body start pack 2.0 liquid. Okay. One healthy body start pack 2.0 liquid. One bottle of Cal Toddy. That's a super life product. That's a subsidiary of Longevity. It's in the back office. But in the drop down list, it's under super life. It's a liquid calcium called Cal Toddy. That's C A L. I have it. Cal Toddy. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, one, two, three bottles of Ultimate Selenium. Three bottles of Ultimate Selenium. Okay. Uh, one bottle of Immortalium. Okay. Uh, one uh, bottle of plant-derived minerals. So is that the liquid or the pill? Yeah, liquid. Um, you could do, I'll give you a choice. You can do the liquid, plant-derived minerals, or you can do the cherry mints. Okay. Cherry Mins is has a much better taste. Okay. Um, a one bottle of that a month, please. And the secret sauce here is the triple treat chocolate. Okay. I want you to do if you can do it four four boxes of triple treat chocolate a month. Yeah, that's three pieces a day, right? That's what I that's can do. That's okay. Yep, that's it. Now, um, a diet high in cholesterol is the key. You got to eat eggs. You got to eat full fat yogurt, full fat milk, something, you know, I don't care. Butter, chicken with the skin, right? Cholesterol, go cholesterol crazy, man. Yeah. I would have 80% of your diet, 80% of your diet be healthy fat, 80%. Wow. Well, that's what, and interestingly enough, you know, you don't hear about this a lot because the, the press is what the press is, and, you know, there's like, five corporations that own the world, right? And so you're not going to hear this. Harvard University came out with a study two years ago, I think, two years ago. And their conclusion was that 
people with neurological illnesses, 80% a diet that's 80% fat is beneficial. <laughs> of course, that didn't catch on in the popular press, but even Harvard agrees with us in this regard. Okay. So you got to go crazy for cholesterol. Now, sometimes that's easy, sometimes that's difficult. Uh, naturopathic medicine is is available in in your province, right? Yes. Okay, so you may want to find a local naturopath. I have been doing. I have been going. And tell them that Dr. Glidden says he recommends you get a concentrated cholesterol in a capsule. Because we, that's available. There's a company somewhere that makes cholesterol, and they purify cholesterol, put it in a capsule, and it's a prescription. You can get it. You can't get it over the counter. Okay. But I would get it, and I would take it. Um, now, also. Like how much, or just let them decide that? Yeah, they'll be able to decide it. Well, if, um, once you get it, Call me back. If they don't know how to dose it, you call me back on the show. Tell me what the concentration is per capsule, and I'll tell you what to do. Okay. I don't have this information at my fingertips. Otherwise, I'd just tell you now. But um, anyway, that's how you do it. Okay, so that's actually a prescription item. Well, yeah, you, yeah, you can only get – that's only – the only people that can stock that in their office and dispense it are, you know, people with a medical license. Okay. Okay, so so now the only other thing is you need to become the uh, uh, antioxidant queen of Edmonton. Okay. You need to know everything there is to know about antioxidants, and you need to secure a minimum of 100,000 ORAC points of antioxidants a day. Okay. Now, the triple tree chocolate, you know, if you do three pieces a day, that's almost, that's like 58,000, 57,000. Um, so you need about, you know, 43,000 more. The Beyond Tangy Tangerine two scoops will give you 8,000. So you're going to need about 35,000 ORAC points of antioxidants a day. 35,000 ORAC points. Let's bump that up to 50. So in addition, in, I'm sorry, Cell Shield. You can do Cell Shield at 110 pounds. I'd be careful with Cell Shield because if you do too much Cell Shield, in order to get your ORAC up, it's going to lower your blood pressure and it's going to make you feel lightheaded and you're okay. you're going to feel like you don't have any energy. So don't take Cell Shield. Well, I you know it wouldn't be my first choice. Okay. It really wouldn't. The Immortalium would. And off the top of my head, I forget how much ORAC the Immortalium has. I think it's 8,000 per two caps. Okay. So after everything's said and done with the longevity supplements, you're still going to need 50,000 ORAC a day of antioxidants. So you're going to have to figure out how to do that. And, you know, if, if it's in the budget, you just want to do more chocolate, I'm okay with that. Um, if you want to do more Immortalium, I'm okay with that. Don't, don't, but don't do Cell Shield. Not at your body weight. That's not a good okay, idea. So how much more Immortalium or how much? Well, you'd, you'd have to do the math and figure it out. Okay. Um, so and it's, it'll say on the bottle how many, you know, how many, it's two, per two caps, I think it's 8,000 ORAC, or maybe it's per four caps, I don't okay. know. And it's okay to double that or whatever? Yeah, you can do as yeah. much of the Immortalium as you want. There's no, you can okay. do a bottle a day of that stuff if you want. Okay. No harm and no foul. But, you know, we need not overlook the obvious. I mean, you know, so there's uh, cinnamon and curry powder and cloves and uh, uh, cayenne pepper and green tea and red wine and walnuts, right? And all of these things are very high in antioxidants. Okay. So, you know, by, or, you know, and there's certain types of coffee you can get, whole, whole fruit coffee instead of just the coffee bean. I don't know. Are you a coffee drinker? No, I'm not. Okay. Well, green tea? Well, there you go. Go crazy for green tea. If you can find it, white tea has even more antioxidants in it. So, Okay. What about rooibos? Yeah, you can do rooibos, but you got to be careful with rooibos because at 110 pounds, rooibos can really kind of amp you up a little too much and make you feel like a little like, you know, like, you, like you're, you've just had three or four shots of espresso. And I don't know what the ORAC count for rooibos is. I don't know it. But, uh, you know, I'm sure that it has one. Um, so I you're going to have to do the math and figure out how you're going to get an extra 50,000 ORAC into your body every day. 
and how you're going to secure a diet that's 80% fat. This is the sticking point. I got to tell you, the people that I've seen recover or get better with neurological diseases went crazy for cholesterol. And I mean, they went crazy for cholesterol. So that's a, that's a key. I can tell you that that's a key. I can tell you that that's not easy to do, which is why I think a cholesterol capsule might not be a bad option here for you. Okay, so is healthy fats, does that include like, like avocados? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yep, yep. And if you're going to have cow's milk or goat's milk or sheep's milk or derivatives thereof, you know, cheese or yogurt, make sure it's full fat. Right. Right, not skim or 2%. It's full fat or no fat, as far as I'm concerned, for you from now on. Okay. And the easiest way to get cholesterol into the body is eggs and butter. Okay. Um, so you can get creative about how you do that, right? Okay. Okay. Um, so that's really it in a, in a nutshell. And um, remember, what we're looking for is a specific and measurable noticeable change. So now because you've got a lot of things all bundled together here, I would get a legal pad, and on the left-hand column, I would write down all the things that are bothering you. You know, I'd line them up one at a time. Okay. And then every week, I would check in with that symptom and give it a score from 0 to 10. Uh, you know, 0 being it's all gone, and 10 being, you know, just take me into the pasture and shoot me in the head because it hurts so much, right? Okay. Um, because that way, you'll be able to see over the course of, you know, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, eight weeks, nine weeks, 12 weeks, if you're getting better. Because the way that the mind works, right, you know, you might have seven things that are bothering you. Four of them go away completely. But because three are still hanging fire, you forget about the four that are gone completely and you're just focused on the three that are still remaining and you don't have any perspective on the healing process. That's really easy to do that, especially with neurological illnesses. So if you keep a record of your improvement, right, or, or lack thereof, you know, right. you'll have a better sense of whether the protocol is effective or whether we need to switch it up. But we are looking here, and especially in a 110-pound person, for something to change in a positive direction that's noticeable and measurable within four weeks. Okay. Yeah, because I've been doing this for longer than that. I haven't noticed much, much of the thing. You know. Okay. So, and you're 100% sure you're 100% gluten-free? Yep. Okay. Now, I will tell you one more thing that I have seen with especially chronic diseases, you know, stuff that people have had for a long time. And arguably, this game has been afoot in your body for decades now, and prednisone doesn't do anything to stop the degenerative process, which we believe is affiliated with or associated with MS. Okay, I was just that for six weeks. Yeah, it just kind of covers it up. But, yeah, but you had the MS symptoms decades ago, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, presumptively, there's been low-level oxidative damage happening in your body for a long, long time, right? right? Yeah. So, often, with people that have been suffering, you know, with stuff for decades rather than months, well, what will happen is... You get on board with the therapy, you change your diet, you take the supplements, you feel a little bit more energy, maybe your blood pressure changes, maybe your heartburn gets a little bit better, you start sleeping through the night or whatever, but really, other than that, nothing of any real substance happens. But you maintain the discipline because intuitively you feel like it's a good thing to do. So four weeks goes by, eight weeks goes by, 12 weeks goes by, 16 weeks goes by, who knows how long it's going to take. You know, nine months down the road, you wake up, one day, and it's like somebody flipped a switch. And all of a sudden, you feel incrementally better in the next two, three, four weeks. It's like, you know, it's like watching a big jet liner take off. It takes a long time for that sucker to roll down the runway just for even the nose to lift off. But then what it re reaches a certain point, and then boom, you know, it's 3,000 feet in the air in five seconds. And that's what often the healing here is like for people that have been dealing with stuff for decades so maintain the discipline here um, medical nutrition is a it's a good friend and sometimes it takes a while for that investment to produce returns but maintain the discipline uh, i don't think you'll be sorry and call me back every four weeks i'll look forward to it appreciate you okay. very much Keep up I the good work. Do I take extra EFA as well? Um, hold on. I'll answer that when we come back. Okay. 
Let's go back to Karen in Alberta. She had a great question about uh, more EFAs. Yeah, Karen, that's a really good way to get more um, healthy fats into your body is with the EFAs. In your case, what I would do is I would lean on the EFA Plus. Okay. And I would do a total of three bottles of the EFA Plus a month. That's nine a day. Uh, three with breakfast, three with lunch, and three with dinner. Now, if you're doing that much at your body weight, you want to look to see if you start to bruise easily. If you start to bruise easily, then you need to cut down on the essential fatty acid dosage um, by uh, three capsules a day. Okay? Okay. Um, I've been taking six of those a day and three of the... um, the Right. The, the, ones the multi-EFAs? Yeah. Or the the other ones? Yeah. yeah. I would lean entirely on the EFA Plus, and I would do nine. Okay. Now, in the in the little commercial break here, I, ha- I had a little memory intuitive insight flash. There's an underutilized product in Longevity that you may find beneficial here. It's called Renew IQ. Renew IQ. And it was specifically developed, believe it or not, by a guy from Harvard to support and promote healthy brain function. And you may find it to have kind of secondary beneficial results here. You know, given the serious nature of this problem that you're up against, I don't think it's a bad idea to implement that for three days, uh, three months as an experiment as part of this protocol. So it's called Renew IQ. It's in a powder like the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. It has kind of a bitter, grapey taste. Um, Follow the recommendations on the bottle. I don't know how many scoops a day it is, but it'll tell you there. I would do one at 110 pounds. I would do one Renew IQ a month for three months and see if that gives you um, any extra traction. And I'm sure that that also has an ORAC score. Okay. So we might might kill two birds with one stone. Okay. And what about um, Glucogel or CM Plus? Like for to help with the the, the cramping and stuff. Well, the glucogel not so much. I, you know, the only time that glucogel would be necessary here is if there was specifically an arthritic thing that was diagnosed. It doesn't sound like it's that's at play with you. Okay. CM cream can be used topically anywhere on the body I, that your exp- cream makes much difference. Yeah, the I wouldn't but think I that the well, the, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't lean on the, the the only the cream has been clinically proven to produce results it, it, like over ninety percent of the time right. with arthritic conditions. Muscles. You know, arthritic conditions specifically right. for for this type of muscle thing, you need more calcium and you need more um, selenium. So, also as an experiment for seven days in a row, what you might find interesting is to do four ounces of the liquid calcium a day. Do a half an ounce of the Beyond Osteo FX and a half an ounce of the Caltati mixed together in a little bit of orange juice four times a day for seven days. And see if that extra amount of calcium and magnesium um, produces a noticeable positive change in the muscle pain and tension, if it does then you can maintain that therapeutic dose. If there's no change whatsoever in the muscle condition after um, seven days of four ounces a day, then you can go back to the two-ounce-a-day dose. Okay, so seven, for, sorry, four ounces of calcium. Yeah, so one ounce of calcium four okay. times a day for seven days. Okay, mixed with a half ounce of... Yeah, no, no. So to get that one ounce of calcium... Mix a half an ounce of the Beyond Osteo and a oh. half an ounce of the Caltati together. All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and do that four times a day. Yeah. Uh, with a little bit of orange juice each time or some type of citrus, right? Pineapple juice, orange, and, pineapple, banana. And how long can you actually maintain that? If it's working, how long can you maintain that? For, indefinitely. Long? There's no harm and no foul. Um, that much more no, 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 no harm and no foul. You know, notwithstanding, if, if you start to get diarrhea... Yeah. Then you need to back off on the dosage, but that would be the only that would be the only caveat there. That's not there's no harm and no foul in doing that if it's effective. Okay. okay. And do I want enzymes or flora? 
No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go there. You can always do those as add-ons if you need to, but that wouldn't be the first thing that I would think of. Enzymes certainly. Flora. I only recommend flora four times a year uh, when the seasons change for a month at a time, unless of course you've had a big experience with antibiotics. But those would be secondary add-ons, not primary add-ons. We're out of time, Karen. Regretfully, I appreciate you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for your patience and your support. I am your steadfast advocate for health. See you around.